everyone, and welcome to AI with Sohini, where we talk about everything in the field of artificial intelligence. If you've been tuning in so far, you've been seeing that in the last few videos, it's been about annotation systems. It's image and video, how to take images and to generate good annotations, you know, create bounding boxes, semantic segmentation, so on and so forth. Today, we are actually going to be using those annotations to train machine learning models. So if you are a data scientist or a machine learning engineer or a computer vision uh, you know, expert or person who's just interested in these topics, and you would like to know about my recent publication in an IEEE conference in 2022, which talks about this model, which is a nested unit model, which can be used in order to detect quality of medical images if they should be used for training or not. So if you're interested in the field of computer vision, if you want to know how to use as little amount of training data as possible for training machine learning models, or if you're just interested in learning more about the recent developments in computer vision, then please stay tuned, give this a video thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. First, let's start by understanding why we even need new machine learning models. There are already so many machine learning models. Why do we even need to investigate new machine learning models? Now, first off, we know that medical image you know, processing is extremely difficult just because there is a need for high quality annotated data. And getting high quality annotated data is extremely expensive because it involves a specialist's time. So it's cost and time intensive. And most of the existing methods, so let's say that you want to train a new segmentation algorithm for a, a specific region of interest, how do you select what the best quality images are that should be used in order to train? So ideally, in these cases, you can do random sampling or detection using some pre-trained models. So the proposed method actually relies on intermediate stages of semantic segmentation, and it is used to detect a minimal training subset, which is generalizable across medical imaging modalities. So let's try to understand what this difference between a unit to a unit plus plus model or a nested unit model is. So typically, if you have a 256 by 256 image, um, then, you know, the a standard unit model with four different, uh, you know, layers or four different uh, levels uh, looks something like this. And it's called a unit because the shape of the model looks like a U. So first off, you start the, the images by, by convolving them. So the green layers are all convolutions. And then once you've reached the, the feature layer, then you start deconvolving them. And you also pad them with the with the you know convolved versions at the same level in order to get a better um, you know sense of foreground versus background. So typically it is used for semantic segmentation. UNET is the is one of the best and the most powerful models for semantic segmentation because it will give you the background in uh, you know as, as all dark pixels and the foreground as the bright pixel. So this is what a standard unit looks like. Now let's get into what unit plus plus looks like or a nested unit looks like. A nested unit has way more layers. As you can see, just for a four a level unit, there are six extra layers that get added to it. And because of these extra layers, the advantage is that the pronunciation of the foreground versus background is much more accurate. Now, how we use this uh, model to our advantage is, as you can see, all the blue layers are the are the convolution layers and all the green ones are the deconvolution or the upsampling layers. So what this unit plus plus model allows you to do is you can actually look at the outputs generated at every level of the unit model. So what happens is you get a lot of intermediate images, which otherwise in a unit get ignored. But what we have done in this work is we are actually utilizing these intermediate levels of outputs that is produced by a unit plus plus model. The idea is if the agreeability between these intermediate layers or intermediate uh, you know steps in this unit plus plus model is very high that means you already know what the regions of interest you need to extract then this is not an image that should be used for training however if you start seeing a huge you know discrepancy between the agreeability of the of the images that are extracted from layer one versus layer two versus layer three and layer four then this is an image that needs to be further investigated 
or used for training. So the proposed method, it happens in two steps. First off, we detect an initial training set. So this is about 15 to 20 images, at max 20 images, not more than that. The first step tells you, select the images that have low blurriness and high PSNR. So we, in this case, because the y-axis is PSNR inverse, we select the images in the bottom left quadrant. Once the 15, 20 images are used to annotate and train a, a unit plus plus model, then we start looking at the quality of every other remaining scan. So let's say you have 500 scans, you've already picked 20 images annotated them to train this unit plus plus model. The next journey is to select from the remaining 480 remaining images, which are the ones that have high relative disagreeability between the outputs at level three and four and select only those for retraining the unit plus plus model. So that is the overall method. So let's see some of the examples. So this would be a, a sample example of, of lung. And in this case, as you can see, the, the quality score or the agreeability between level three and level four is very high. So almost all of the regions between level three and level four are, are selected. So the intersection over union is very high. So in this case, the quality factor is very high. So this is a high quality image. You do not need to use this for you know retraining purpose. However, if we start taking a look at uh, OCT images, here you can see the relative disagreeability between level three and level four is extremely high. So they are disagreeing. They are not similar at all. There are a lot of, uh, you know, spar sparring regions that are there in, in level three, and these are actually, you know, absent in level four. So there is a huge amount of disagreeability between level three and level four, which makes the quality very poor. So because the quality of this image is poor, that means it needs to be investigated further, or it is something that should be used for annotating and fine tuning the unit plus plus model. And qualitative results, I just wanted to show you some. Uh, these would be examples of, of images that have very low agreeability, right? So these would be the images that do get selected for your you know, retraining, while these would be images that do not get. So because magenta regions means there is high agreeability between um, you know, actual and, and, and ground truth. So there are definitely some images that need further fine tuning versus there are images that you know are definitely fine. Now that we understand the process, let's look at the code. So if you're interested in the paper, it is also linked to my GitHub that I will be putting in the description box below. So let's get to the code that, that I'm going to be using here. So I wanted to show you two, two things. Uh, first off is understanding the model. So how the mo how this uh, model underscore new dot py how this progresses is first of all uh, I define uh, all of the loss functions um, you know I define all of the different you know standard pooling layers and and the standard units and then first off you will see the unit model so this is if you want to compare it to the unit model this is what it would look like so again first of all you're just doing all of the you know de uh, all all of the you know max pooling or the convolutions followed by then you just go for the uh, you know up pooling or the deconvolutions in, in this case. And finally, the, the model that we will be using is called the nest net or the you know nested unit model. And here, as you will see, the number of layers is way more. Um, the input and the output size, they remain the same, but you as you as expected, you will have convolution followed by deconvolution again. And finally, uh, what I wanted to show you is there is this version called deep supervision. So deep supervision is when you also extract the outputs of the intermediate layer. So if you turn this deep supervision uh, level off, that means if you say that deep supervision equals to false, then you only get the outcome of the final layer. But if you turn this one on, then you actually get the intermediate layer outcomes as well. So first off, again, the, the flow is very similar to any of the other unit um, you know, models. Um, so first off, you just define what the model looks like. You should, whenever you, you apply these kind of deep learning models, you should always use image data generator in which you are not just passing the self image, but also, um, you know, zoomed in, zoomed out, rotated version. So augmentation. Um, so this is just the function in which we are, uh, you know, visualizing the augmentations, which is done. And then finally, we just fit the model. So using this method, we are able to reduce the number of images that are necessary for training a medical imaging based uh, detection or semantic segmentation algorithm. I hope you find it useful and please try out the, you know, the, the model and please try out the code and leave me a comment if you find this interesting. Thanks and see you next time.